pronounce your last name for me? Uh, Hennisdales. Hennisdales, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though you're listed on the roster as Maxime? Maxime. Mm -hmm. Maxime. You go by Max. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. So now that I'm uh, actually recording, just so you know, I have my facts straight. Mm -hmm. um, can you pronounce the name of your hometown? Uh, Saint Ignatius, Florida. Okay. And, and about how far away from Brussels is that? I'm 30 to 35 minutes without traffic. Okay. So Brussels is a long way away from Auburn, Alabama. How how does a Belgian guy end up on the plains? Oh, well, this was uh, all because of the tennis and uh, the studies. I wanted to combine my sport with the education, and through recruitment, I ended up in Auburn. What's the biggest difference between Auburn and, and Belgium? Well, I would say the hospitality. Um, people are a little bit different. Um, I guess the only difference is between Auburn and Belgium would be like the difference between Northern America and Southern America, like the difference in the Southern hospitality. Uh, I feel like Belgium is a little bit more like North America when it comes to hospitality. Okay. So last Tuesday, there was an attack in, in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Being that you're a world away, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you process that? Well, at first it's disbelief. You. you you know, when the Paris attack occurred, it's also disbelief, but it's like a little further away, and you're like, you never really realize that your country could be next. And then when something like this happens really close to home, I, it's a feeling I can't describe. It just, yeah, like I said, disbelief. You can't believe that people actually would do something like that um, for their specific reasons, whatever they are and you just make sure that everybody that you know is okay and you just pray that everybody that was concerted attacks all the injuries will recover soon joe was telling me your parents actually had a really close call yeah so my parents are actually supposed to be landing in atlanta at five o'clock today uh, and they're scheduled to fly out on saturday and from further investigation whatever police investigation they had Past week, they did the month that the attacks were somewhere around through Saturday or this Monday. So, you know, it, it's it's a close call, but I'm really glad they were in there the day it happened. How do you focus on tennis when when that's going away in your home country and, and you're so far away? Well, at first, I, I think I had to realize that I'm here and there's nothing that I can do because I'm here. And even if I was there. If something like this happens, it's something that leaves you powerless. And to be playing, we're playing a sport where we have to be able to separate the outside world of our competition. So once we step on that court, we have to, no matter what it is, try to not focus on it because we have another task to perform. And we've been doing it for so long that it's still not easy, but it's something that we are kind of used to do. So, I mean, I honestly had no trouble this weekend concentrating on what I had to do but yeah it's especially later at night or like when you're a little alone by yourself that you like you're thinking about it because me and Jeff eventually we have to get back home and we have to take that plane to that exact same airport they got attacked so you're, you're kind of thinking like is it truly really safe now there like what if they think about bombing it again when we're landing there and th those little thoughts come to your mind but outside of that one, once we're playing there is we just play. We don't. It's not really on my mind. I've never been to Europe, but you know, just from my brief, poor American education, you know, I, I look at the United States, and it's it's a pretty big country with a lot of states. But but Europe looks like you know a small, just a lot of countries, a lot of small countries around each other, mm -hmm. with all these attacks happening. Even though some of them, you know, they're in Paris or different places, what is it like in Europe? now from talking to people back home? Um, well, I've, I've talked to a few friends that go to university there and they just told us that everybody is kind of in shock, especially in Belgium now because the attack took place there. Um, it, 
it's a shock because even after Paris attacks, there were a few threats, and already then they went up to a security scale four, where like military was on the streets. So now they're going maybe back to that or a little above. So it, they they just I don't know how to to say. They just feel it's weird. You know, you're walking on the street and you suddenly see like um, like a Humvee with like two military people. Like it, it's something you we at least we have never seen before. So it's uh, it's weird. Whenever 9-11 uh, is probably the, the closest thing that I can relate to with this, you know, with the country being attacked in such a, a barbaric fashion, and the immediate talk of, you know, how America will respond, you know, how, how are we going <laughs> to handle this, you know, we're not going to take that. How will the Belgian people respond to this? Well, I honestly think and believe that we as civilians just have to unfortunately continue on with their lives we cannot be afraid of traveling around the world or like avoid that airport or the metro station that got attacked we we have to keep coming out and live our lives unfortunately to the people that have fallen in those attacks and our duty is to like leave the superiors and the government do whatever they think is good to do as a defense mechanism to those attacks um, and uh, that's how we will like have to go through it it's just as civilians just continue to like live on and keep traveling and just not stay sheltered i guess how helpful has it been that you have a, a countryman on the team with you well it, it has been really helpful it, um i mean i guess the first day when it happened we both woke up and you know, seven hours it already happened for like a few hours so and we woke up and like no idea what was going on and so uh, we, we talked to each other and we were like, yeah, what do you think of it? Um, oh yeah, it's awful. Like, but like, again, we're powerless. There's nothing we can do. We have our own opinions, but we're st like kind of stuck here. So we can o the only thing we can do is follow the media, make sure that all our relatives are safe, and that's it. Cool, thanks, man. You're welcome. You did a great job. Thank you.